potential pickup people unaware of this Great Wall steed won't be for very much longer. Selling at prices that offer enormous savings over established rivals in this segment, this tough Chinese double cab pickup is strong and capable, powered by a lusty 145 PS 2 litre turbo diesel. And despite the bargain basement pricing, you get leather lined air conditioned luxury to soothe away the strains of the working day. All of which means that if you're about to sign a huge check for one of the established players in this sector, you just might want to try one of these first. For years now, our homes have been full of Chinese products. Today that means not only the cheap throwaway items, but much of your high-tech stuff too. All Apple products are made in China, as are hundreds of thousands of motor vehicles every year. Models like this one, the Great Wall Steed Pickup. This is the first Chinese branded and built model to make it to the UK. An assault on our market, you might have expected to start with a budget price family car. But the Chinese are cleverer than that. They know that early examples of their export output won't be as sophisticated as the European and Japanese class leaders. So where better to start than in a market segment where a few rough edges matter little as long as the product is tough, reliable and decent value. And this one claims to be just that. And it's made by a company that has plenty of experience in producing vehicles of this kind. Great Wall has been making trucks since 1977 and is China's biggest producer of pickups, shifting 120,000 or so of these things each year in its home market alone, part of an annual output that in global terms makes it a more significant player than a maker like Volvo, thanks to export markets in over 120 countries. The brand acknowledges though that ours could be the most difficult to break into of all. Which is why this steed has come thoroughly equipped for the task with tough, durable build, luxurious equipment levels, a refreshingly customer-centric dealer network, and most importantly, an asking price that reads like a misprint. Will it all be enough to give the Chinese their first proper foothold in the British automotive sector? Let's find out. Now approach any pickup expecting a rewarding driving experience and you're likely to be disappointed. It goes with the territory. The leaf sprung suspension uh, at the rear that most vehicles of this kind must have for the heavy loads they must carry is about as conducive to pin sharp handling as Wellington boots would be to Lewis Hamilton's driving. So when I tell you that this steed feels solid and utilitarian to drive, you should gauge from that that it's pretty much par for the course in its segment. OK, so it's not as refined as a Ford Ranger, but at 30% less to buy outright, did you seriously think it would be? Probably the biggest compliment you could pay this Great Wall model is that if you were to take away the badges, most would probably never guess that it wasn't one of the more affordable uh, pickups uh, from Isuzu or Sanyong. The two litre diesel engine under the bonnet isn't the last word in uh, engine technology, but it's a willing unit with 143 PS on tap. That's about the same as you get from a comparable 2.5 litre D4D Toyota Hilux. Um, there isn't quite the same level of torque that you'd get in a Hilux, uh, just 305 newton meters. That's one of the reasons why this Great Wall has a relatively limited braked towing capacity of just 2,500 kilograms. And it's that lack of torque that you really notice when pulling away from rest, uh, which explains why uh, rest of 60 takes a relatively leisurely 17 seconds or so. But once the variable geometry turbocharger spools up and you get up to speed, most should be quite satisfied with the level of performance on offer. The rather notchy six-speed manual gearbox isn't the sweetest thing I've ever used and needs a firm hand. But the brakes are quite strong, uh, despite being discs up front and drums at the rear. And as you'd expect, um, uh, anti-lock brakes and electronic brake force distribution comes as part of the package, so they tend to get the job done effectively. Also effective is the steering, 
uh, light and easy to use around town where it facilitates a 13.5 metre turning circle and uh, reasonably fearsome on the open road. Actually, this is one of uh, the Great Wall Steed's best features probably. Um, the steering on most pickups tends to be vaguer than a BBC chief at a parliamentary in inquiry, but this one um, is actually quite effective on fast flowing routes and you always know what the front wheels are doing. If you wonder how relevant the need for that is in a pickup, then you probably aren't very familiar with driving one. Rear wheel drive without traction control on a wet roundabout is a combination that can very quickly land you in trouble if you're pressing on without much idea of what's happening beneath you. Of course, you don't have to be in two wheel drive if conditions are that slippery. Pressing the 4H button uh, on the dashboard as you can at speeds of up to 12 miles an hour will bring the front wheels into play too for extra tractional peace of mind on icy or slippery wet mornings. Um, you'll also get a remarkable distance off-road in the 4H setting but uh, for really muddy and gnarly conditions of course you'll need to go a step further. Selecting the 4L option will give you a further set of low range gears that if you've got an appropriate set of tyres fitted will get you almost anywhere off-road. And off-road you'll appreciate a reasonable 194 millimetres of ground clearance and useful approach and departure angles of 30 and 24 degrees respectively. There's also a uh, ramp angle of 17.5 degrees. Another area where this steed may confound your expectations is in the way that it looks. Now there isn't that much you can do with the shape of a double cab pickup, but most I think will see this as one of the more nicely styled vehicles in its segment. There's a high bonnet line in a car-like front end and deep grills above and below the protective bumper. Sculpted lines lead airflow around the bottom of the deep headlamps towards a side profile that has uh, protective rubbing strips along its length and is marked out by muscular wheel arches. The stylists have been clearly copying the established Japanese models and will probably continue to do so until Great Wall feels strong enough as a brand to create its own identity. Under the galvanised body lies the kind of tough ladder frame chassis you'd expect a working pickup to have. Strengthened and braced by reinforced middle cross members, an impact absorbing rear beam and a reinforced cargo bed. Climb inside and you're greeted by a dashboard that's functional and tough looking but probably isn't going to win too many design awards. You get the usual elevated seating position and ahead of you, an instrument binnacle that includes simple rev counter, speedo and fuel gauge readouts um, lit by cool white instrumentation at night. These leather seats may not be suited to the muckiest of tradesmen, but they feel like they could handle 100,000 miles without too much of a problem. And though some of the dash plastics are rather hard, that's probably suited to the kind of stick that this vehicle is going to get in its working environment. Plus, everything seems to have been decently screwed together by the Tanjin factory 60 miles from Beijing. In-cab storage includes most of the basics you'd expect. A lockable glove box, space in the centre console, uh, cup holders in front of the gear stick and in the door bins, uh, a deep bin between the front seats, the top of which incorporates a tray and map pockets in the front seat backs. As for finding the ideal driving position, well that's hampered slightly by the fact that you don't get a height adjustable driver's seat or reach adjustment for the steering wheel, though you can move it up and down. But all round visibility is good and most of the major controls fall easily to hand, so all in all it's a decent showing at this price point. The rear seats aren't quite as comfortable as those at the front and knee room will be at something of a premium if the person you're sitting behind is long of leg. The middle occupant doesn't get a headrest but does get a proper three-point belt. Sanyong and Toyota take note. It's also nice to find that the windows actually for once go all the way down 
and you've got some extra storage room if you're not using the back seat for passengers and you want somewhere dry for packages or you simply need more load space than the uh, pickup bay can provide. Uh, the seat backs fold onto the seat base. If the thought of buying something called a Great Wall Steed sounds a little strange, then it does at least have more of a ring to it than the name that this vehicle must bear in its home market, where it's known as the Great Wall Wingle. But then, Great Wall as a brand has always had a thing about names. The Kauri, the Sailor and the Cool Bear are all models well known to Chinese buyers. What really matters about this vehicle though is how much it costs. The bull facts are that there simply aren't any pickups that can really compete with this great wall on price. Take this entry level S model, which will cost you around 14,000 pounds, excluding the VAT. Now, how can I put that into perspective for you? Well, it's two thirds of the cost of a Toyota Hilux. It's less than most rivals will cost you with VAT. And it's also less than most rivals cost in single cab, two wheel drive form. This Great Wall Steed comes only with a double cab, four wheel drive layout. If you are comparing with rivals, then make sure you compare like with like. The bare stats suggest that a double cab, four wheel drive Mitsubishi L200 will set you back around two and a half thousand pounds more, and a Volkswagen Amarok four wheel drive double cab around four thousand pounds more. But equip either of those to this Great Wall Steed's standard and you'd probably be looking at a price pushing up towards £20,000. And that standard is, well, very complete indeed. You might expect this entry-level S version to be about as plushly equipped as a Bulgarian thrift store, but in fact, you'd be surprised at what you'll get. 16-inch alloy wheels with lockable wheel nuts, uh, remote central locking, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm, daytime running lights, front and rear electric windows, an Alpine CD stereo that's MP3 and USB compatible and also uh, has Bluetooth connectivity for your phone, steering wheel audio controls, air conditioning, heated seats and full leather trim for the seats, the steering wheel and the gear knob. The door mirrors are large and electrically powered, though would benefit from a, a wide angle section for better blind spot vision. And you get the kind of proper full size spare wheel that a working vehicle like this really needs. Bear in mind though, that unless you want your steed to come in white, you'll have to pay extra for metallic paint. But overall though, it's a quite mind boggling uh, tally of standard kit for a vehicle of this price. Leather, aircon, and heated seats for 14 grand? Unbelievable. After that, spending another 2,000 pounds on the range topping Steed SE seems almost like an act of willful extravagance. Still, it does get you a body colored hardtop for the load bay, um, a body colored spoiler, uh, chrome trim around the daytime running lights, chromed sidebars, black roof rails, a protective load bay liner, and reverse parking sensors and those parking sensors I'd suggest will come in quite useful for although this particular great wall isn't visible from space it is rather a large vehicle. Options include well the usual things the commercial load bay cover, a bespoke toolbox, uh, various tonneau load bay covers and of course a tow bar. Safety wise it seems as if all the main bases have been covered with anti-lock brakes made more effective by electronic brake force distribution though no traction or stability control even as an option. Also missing are Isofix child seat fastenings and side airbags, but you do get a driver and a passenger's front airbag. Let's lower the tough drop down tailgate and start at the business end. Now you can't lower it completely because of this chunky bumper, but at least that does incorporate a step with a non-slip rubber tread. In the load bay itself, you've got 1,380 millimetres of length, 1,460 millimetres of width, and 480 millimetres of depth. To put that into perspective for you, it's slightly longer, but a little narrower and shallower than the class average. But there's only a few millimetres in it, and to all intents and purposes, this is a properly sized load bay, and certainly big enough for the uh, usual standard Euro pallet. 
The rival Sangyong uh, Corando Sports pickup can do this too, but falls down when it comes to payload capacity. This Great Wall Steed doesn't with a decent gross payload of 1,050 kilograms, a figure that ensures the recoverability of VAT. Go for the optional load liner and there are four tie down points to stop loads from moving around, which is just as well because there's no standard ladder rack fitted just behind the cab to protect the driver if all else fails and something really bulky slides forward. Uh, the gross vehicle weight is 2,885 kilograms or 2,785 kilograms when you're towing. And talking of hauling things about, the braked towing capacity is about two thirds of that um, offered by many rival pickups. It's uh, 2,000 kilograms or 750 kilograms uh, when you're towing on an unbraked format. Um, but that should be quite sufficient for most users. As for the peace of mind you'll want in buying an unfamiliar brand, well, there's an industry leading six year, 125,000 mile warranty, plus three years of roadside recovery and assistance. Now you shouldn't need it. Over 750,000 steeds had been sold worldwide before this model's UK introduction, including in tough markets like Australia, where if it's no good, we won't buy them, mate. As for residual values, well, buyers will have paid so relatively little for this vehicle in the first place that they shouldn't be in danger of losing too much money when the time comes to sell. Servicing requirements for the CR 2-litre diesel engine are quite frequent every year or 10,000 miles. Still, at least you might save some money in insurance. Uh, the ratings are the lowest in the segment. That's uh, Group 7A for the Steed S and Group 8A for the Steed SE. Fuel returns are a little below the class best, but will be pretty much what seasoned pickup owners will be expecting. Uh, 34 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, 30.1 uh, miles to the gallon on the urban cycle, and an alleged 37.7 miles to the gallon on the open road. Um, I've been driving this vehicle quite enthusiastically and getting around 30 miles to the gallon from it, which isn't at all bad and should give you a decent range from the 70 litre tank. Not quite as impressive is the 220 grams per kilometre CO2 figure. Perhaps the most important part of the ownership package though is the dealer support that goes into every steed purchase. Every uh, outlet in the UK network has committed to what's called the Great Wall Promise. Now, I'm not sure if this is a little red book, but it does include things like inflation-proof servicing plans, service pickup and drop-off, and even a commitment to bring a vehicle uh, for test drive to a location of the, the customer's choice if they live or work within 20 miles of a Great Wall dealership. 10 out of 10 for effort. In recent times, pickup manufacturers have been pushing their products up market, leaving a gap at the lower, more affordable end of this segment that this steed slots right into. But even if you're aware of that, you can't help approaching this vehicle with a where's the catch mentality. It's just so much less expensive than its rivals that you tend to find yourself analysing every aspect of the way that it works to try and find out where corners have been cut. And it's true, there are areas that could be improved in comparison to the class best. Certainly the next generation Steed model will have the torquier engine and the higher quality cabin that this one lacks. You'll find nothing though that remotely justifies the enormous five to six thousand pound price differential that exists between this great war model and most comparably specified rivals. Look a little more deeply into the background of this vehicle and you discover that its affordability is actually down to things that really don't affect the quality of the product. Cheap labour rates from the efficient Chinese workforce who screw these things together. R&D costs long covered by massive home market sales. And a genuine desire from the Great Wall brand to build a satisfied bank of happy customers on these shores. On this showing, that looks likely. About as certain, in fact, as the expectation that before very much longer, going for a Chinese is something that more and more of us will be doing when it comes to vehicle purchase. You heard it here first. <laughs>